What are the ramifications if this bond bear market continues? Well, I think w the way you have to look at the bond market is that there are really two bond markets um, according to what's priced in. There's the front end of the bond market, which is priced in a tightening. And then there's the back end of the bond market that's priced in that everything's going to be fine after that little tightening. And that the inflation rate's going to go back to 2.7. So the near term has been priced in along the lines of what you're saying. And, it's, and that's, that pricing has passed through to equities and other assets. But this, the second round of tightening hasn't been priced in. It hasn't been priced into the bond market. It hasn't been priced in the stock market. It hasn't been priced into break-even inflation. And so whether that's actually going to happen de really depends on the underlying drivers of the inflation, um, which I think would be good to go into. But um, there's, more, there's more to go, I think. Uh, maybe in the near term we get a little pause because the Fed will probably follow the forward curve up. But even if they follow the forward curve up, you're, you're looking at a bond market that has not discounted How anything higher than 2.7. this? You and I have never, 78, pre-Volker, 77, 78. How do we recover from bond losses like that? You got to hold, hold, hold something besides bonds. Go, go, uh, yeah. go, go, yeah. go, 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 go. <laughs> we'll get into commodities. Or stocks, for that matter. Right. Uh, um, we, I mean, you know, you, you got to go to inflation assets. You got to go inflate. I mean, inflation index bonds would be better than nominal bonds. Before we get go into ahead. a number of the issues that you talked about, including the sources of inflation, which are key, I want to pick up on something that you were pointing out, the second round of tightening, because yeah. you can figure out what's going to happen with the Fed but perhaps people are not getting the response in markets correctly. If the bull case, as people are laying it out, is that the Fed pulls back, is that actually a bullish indicator for equities, or will that actually be negative because it will only send long-end Treasury yields that much higher priced down? Yeah. You know, this come, the, the key determinant of this is the nature of the inflation that we have right now. We think of this as a monetary inflation. We think we're in a monetary inflation which is a very different animal than what we've experienced in the last couple of decades. Recent inflation has a, a cyclical inflation is when you get a, a pop in the economy, pushes up against capacity constraints, inflation goes up. Um, but money and credit are under control. This is a monetary inflation more like the 70s. It was, it was triggered by the massive injection of money and credit by, the, by policy, which has now created a self-reinforcing self process, very high levels of nominal spending, 10% nominal GDP growth. I mean, it's a long time since we've seen high nominal GDP growth, right? right? So, so there are things happening now that people are not used to because we haven't, we haven't seen these dynamics for a long time. But the result of a monetary inflation is high nominal GDP growth. And then that gets absorbed by prices, and so you get low real growth. Right. And that produces stagflation, which creates a very difficult policy uh, choice. So do you think that the U.S. is facing stagflation? We're headed toward it, yeah. In the near term, in the next 12 months? We're headed toward it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you, you game um, out I mean, what that looks like. I mean, we are, of, uh, we are, you know, we're on the cusp of it, yeah. Uh, and it's, now it's, how do you define stagflation? There'd be right. different ways, but basically what the way we look at stagflation is in terms of how it affects markets. And the way it affects markets is if the inflation rate is higher than discounted and the growth rate is lower than discounted. And we're in a situation right now where there's a very low inflation rate discounted, therefore it's easier, easy to be above that, and we've got a high growth rate mm -hmm. discounted, therefore it's easy to be below that. So relative to what's discounted, we're, we could very easily be into this very quickly. I want you to talk about the volatility of hedge funds, where we're seeing people going out of business. Okay, fine, that's a different story. But we're seeing somebody get pounded one year, come back the next year in that. Is the volatility that we're seeing in alternative investments, is that acceptable? Or does it have to be a new paradigm to something involving more stable returns year to year? Well, it, you know, a lot of that comes from having a, um, a, a long bias, right? And so it really paid to be long for a long time. Right. And so that gets embedded into the psyche. It Absolutely. gets embedded. The money yeah. flows yeah. in that direction. Those are the high returners. And long with leverage is even worse. And so, you know, you, you see that, that kind of washout when, when you get a reversal. How will macro do now? How do you do macro? An algebraic equation of Davos, there's an epsilon off the back end you and I have never seen. Well, macro is 
finally mackerel. interesting again. <laughs> That's true. Right? I mean, last time we talked, Every it was, time there's it was Dole, sells 10 more bucks. It was yeah. Dolesville, you know, in 2020. But uh, but no, uh, thanks to so that, what's your thanks to all that right money now. creation, on, that got, inflation, I buy that a bond farm. move, that tightening. Congratulations. Bob, this is interesting stuff Bob, now. what is the macro call right now for you and Mr. Delia? Uh, well, our whole team, you know, we shouldn't just, d d you know. Okay, have it, Patterson but, as but, well. Okay, hold on. <laughs> What's the but, macro call? Um, that the markets are uh, under discounting the the this, the the inflation picture. That the the sustainability, the self reinforcing of the inflation is not discounted. The degree of tightening over time is not discounted. Um, and uh, and I right. think within the stock market, different even different types of companies and how they benefit or are hurt by a high nominal GDP rising interest rate environment. It's, so, a, it's a unique environment that you have to, you can't just take the average of the stock market. Right. You have to go inside it. How much has leverage been beaten out of the system and how much more is there to be unwound? I mean, I, I would imagine there's a lot more to come out of it. It took a long time to build it up, right? Traditional financial leverage, meaning that funds that could actually quickly have to unwind and force selling that we have not seen to date. I, I, I don't really know. Um, but I would raise the opposite case as something that's right. important to register, which is the not leverage in the banking system. As we go, as we think about the economic environment and the impact of the tightening going forward, yeah. the banking system has met, is not leveraged, high capital, very stable deposit base, right. and they have they have the most low risk asset portfolio in ages yeah. because all that printed money went to deposits and they bought treasury bonds, high rate of mortgages, and cash. So the the loans to deposit ratio is at a you know multi decade low. So that if even if the Fed tightens, the bank banking system can sustain the flow of credit into right. the economy and household balance sheets are, right. are much better than they've been in decades.